Hi everyone, in this video we're looking at how to create a 2D contour toolpath in Maker Cam. Now, 2D contour toolpaths were formerly called vector contour toolpaths, and that's because a 2D design file like this is often referred to as a vector design file. But now that you can work with both 2D files and 3D files in Maker Cam, we've distinguished between the different types of toolpaths based on the key properties of two-dimensional designs. So after importing a 2D design like this, you can choose to select different aspects within your design and then use those selections to create various toolpaths. What a contour toolpath does is allows you to follow a line within your design to either create some type of surface engraving or commonly to cut out your part using a perimeter cut. Let's first look at how we could create a outline engraving using a contour toolpath. So let's say that I wanna engrave this text on the surface of my wood part, right? I've selected the text and I can go ahead and then create a 2D contour toolpath. And this differs from a pocket. A pocket would clear out the inner cavities where a contour will follow the outer perimeters. We can set our start depth, which typically would be at zero if you're machining from the surface of your stock. And then you could set your end depth. And if you're just engraving, you might only be engraving a very small amount, like for example, 0.3 millimeters. You have the ability to enable last pass depth to create a finishing pass at a set height within your designs. And you also have the ability to adjust your clearance heights and your safe positions if you were trying to work around any clamps or fixtures that vary from the default positions. Next, we have the ability to select our tool. And if I'm gonna create an outline engraving like this, you're probably gonna use a very small tool, typically an engraving bit. So I'm gonna select a 0.2 millimeter engraving bit where my parameters are already set to be soft wood to match my stock. And we'll see that the feeds and speeds are automatically set for us, but you can of course change the feeds and speeds if you'd like to deviate from the defaults. A common one that you might wanna adjust is the step down, which is how much material is moved per pass so you'll see that my step down is two millimeters. And because I'm only removing uh, 0.3 millimeters of material, that means that we're gonna end up doing it in a single pass. If I wanted to change that, for example, I could set this to be something like 0.1 millimeters, which would then mean that it would actually take three passes to complete this end depth. But for something like softwood, that's really not necessary with this cutting tool. You can also reassign your tool if you'd like to. So if you wanna set it to be a different tool number within your Carvera's tool changer, or just a different number based on the tools that you're already using for your Carvera or Carvera Air. For the strategy, you'll see that we have a couple options. Inside, we'll put the tool bit on the inside of the line and offset it based upon the diameter of the cutting tool. Outside, we'll put the tool bit on the outside of your line and again, offset it based on the diameter of the cutting tool. And on vector will literally follow the path where the tool will be centered right on your line. And if I'm doing an engraving like this, that's usually the option we wanna do, but you'll notice for inside or outside, you have the ability to set a manual offset that will take the bit farther in or farther out from your lines. So with on vector selected, we can then choose between conventional or climb milling as you're working with your different parts. And then you have the ability to enable ramping. What ramping will do is it allows your tool to enter at a gradual angle or slope rather than plunging straight down. And for harder materials like metal, this is really handy as it would prevent you from breaking your bits by just plunging straight into your material. For something soft like wood, I don't necessarily need that, but you'll see that we have some default parameters which usually work pretty well for a wide range of projects. I'm gonna disable that for now. Tabs will hold on to the part if you're cutting all the way through and we'll look more at that in just a minute. For engraving, I'm not cutting all the way through, I'm just engraving the surface. And if I calculate this toolpath, you can see that we just have a nice little outline that follows our design. If I hide the design, you can see that a little bit more clearly to engrave this in the surface of our stock. Now, as mentioned earlier, you can also use contour toolpaths to cut out your parts or to cut out different components within your design. So let's select this outer line now and let's create another 2D contour toolpath. For this one, the start depth would be the same, but my end depth is gonna go down to my stock. And you can see I'm working with five millimeter thick material. You typically cut past your stock if you wanna cut all the way through. So for example, instead of cutting down to a depth of five millimeters, I might cut to a depth of 5.5, which will plunge half a millimeter through my stock into a piece of wasteboard or spoil board that I have mounted below it. 
Again, you can choose to enable a finishing pass if you'd like, and you could choose to adjust your safe positions if you'd like. We can then select a different tool. And for creating an outline cut or removing the part, I wouldn't want to use an engraving bit. Instead, you would typically use a single flute end mill or potentially a corn bit, depending on your stock. And of course, we have more guides to guide you through uh, what bits you should be choosing based on your material. So I'm going to choose this single flute end mill, which is already has the parameters set for my, for my soft wood. And again, as we mentioned earlier, I might choose to change my step downs or my feeds, my speeds, or my tool numbers, depending on my project and the material that I'm working with. And because we're cutting an outline, we're going to do a slightly different strategy. If I cut on the outside, that means that the entirety of the bit will follow along the outside of my part, making this part the exact dimension that it is within my design, and instead removing uh, excess material from the stock around it. If you want to deviate more than the bit diameter, you could set a manual offset, but that's not always necessary. It depends on the design that you're creating. And as mentioned earlier, you can choose to enable ramping, which is handy if you're working with harder materials or, or if you're plunging or, or has a, have a quite large step down to uh, reduce any stress on your bits. But we also want to talk about tabs now. If I'm going to cut this part entirely out of my stock, as it's machining, the part could eject from the material if there's nothing holding it down. And in some of our videos, we show that we use double-sided tape to hold down the material, hold down the design as it's cut all the way through. And that's really handy when making things like PCBs or when working with uh, smooth materials like acrylics and plastics. But for woods and other types of materials, we often use tabs. And what tabs do is they hold on to the part during machining, and then you can manually cut the tabs away using a small handsaw after machining has taken place. So we're gonna click Custom, and you have the ability to create either triangular shaped or rectangular shaped tabs. You also have the ability to manually set the width and the thickness of your tabs. And then you have the ability to add the tabs. So when I click add, we get this little plus button on our mouse pointer and I can move my mouse around and click anywhere on my selected contour to draw my tabs. You can clear the tabs if you want to redraw them or if you put you know one in the wrong spot or if you want to change the position of them and after you've drawn all the tabs in the position that you'd like them you can click exit add and then calculate your toolpath you'll see that the toolpath follows along the outer perimeter and this offset distance isn't because i set an offset that's because that's half of my bit cutting diameter so the bit will be centered along this white toolpath line and then the diameter of the cutting bit will be working along the outer perimeter of my design. You can also see that the tabs are skipped. So you'll see that around this outer perimeter cut, the tabs are not cut as we work through as these material, this material will remain during the cutting process, again, to hold our part and to be cut away manually after machining. So that's how to create two-dimensional contour toolpaths. In other videos, we look at how to do something very similar using three-dimensional models. And we also look at how to create chamfer toolpaths as that's now a separate operation and you don't no longer need to use the contour path to create chamfered cuts as we look at in our other guides. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more on the Make Care channel and Wikisite.